Hi, I'm Pat Donahue, and that was a tune of mine that I just made up called Satisfied, and uh, it was made up by taking a very basic three chord blues and adding movement to the chords until it became something much more sophisticated, and, and so I was improvising that, but there are certain uh, uh, devices that, that uh, can be used, so that's what I'd like to get into today. Well, when I build a blues from the ground up, uh, in this case in the key of G, uh, I'd like to start with just the three primary chords of the 12 bar blues that you may already know. G, or G7, C, or C7, and D, or D7. So these are chords that everybody can relate to, but we're going to add a lot of things on to them. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is show you some alternate ways of playing those three chords so that they don't sound quite so much in the folks folk department, but more in the blues, even slipping towards jazz a little bit. Uh, the G, I would never really play like this, but I would often play it a G7 like this. It's just the E shape up on the third fret, sometimes with the pinky. And I'll probably be using that one most of all, but it also is often played like this, using just the 6-4-3-2 string group. And this G is the root so it's totally movable to G sharp or A or any place else that any of these shapes are. Uh, another reason to do these without open strings involved is because then you can move them anywhere. Uh, okay, so there's the G7. The C, C or C7 is often played as a C9 in this style of music. And a C9 chord is played like this. Take the ring finger, you can lop them over the last three call it a flop chord because you take one finger and you flop it over about three strings there. But these two have to sound out separately so make sure this one doesn't flop too. That's a C9. It's uh, interchangeable with C7. So now what we have is G7, C9, and the D chord. Let's play a hipper thing by just playing that C9 up two frets. Now we have a D9 chord. I'm going to go through this progression using just those three chord shapes. So, all right, two, three, four. I've got the blues. I can't be satisfied. You know, I've got the blues, C7, and I can't be satisfied. Blues don't quit me, gonna catch that freedom ride. Okay, already it's starting to take on a little bit of a, a shape. But now we have those chord, um, chord shapes uh, down. I want to show you some nice movement between them. And the first thing I'd like to show you is this. Followed by this. And what this, this is a device that is, I didn't make it up by any means, but uh, I call them Bill and Bob because <laughs> they have, you can use them in all kinds of places. And to tell you the truth, the chords are G7th, D7th, B flat diminished, and G major over B. But who wants to think about all that stuff? So I just named it Bob, and it's <laughs> this move here. And when you put the root on the fifth string and play major chord like this, I do it this way because it's movable, you, your bill goes like this. It's the same move, uh, only with the root on the fifth string, which gives you a lot more range on the guitar. So let me play those two together and I'll show you slowly how they're done. Here's G7. I'm playing, by the way, on the string set of 6-3-2 mostly. 6-4-3, my fault. My 6-4-3. However, you can also just chunk them along like this, but the real meat of it is that there, the second chord, is you take your middle finger, this one here, and put it over on the sixth string fifth fret. And I'll just tell you that, because that makes these other two fingers fall in line to where they're supposed to be there, fourth and fifth frets. But the thing to do is to get this finger over here right away. That's the trick. And then you take that chord up one fret each. Now it's a B, diminished, B flat diminished. The last thing is, you leave your index finger where it is, and you stretch these two up to the 8th fret. 
And what you have is a G major again, only with the third of the chord in the bass, as opposed to the root of the chord. So we have this movement. And this is just broadcloth movement. You might play it backwards, forwards, or skip some steps, backwards, you know, and they start to take on a life of their own. That's, that's Bob. And uh, so I'm going to insert Bob into this progression now. Two, three, four. I got the blues, and I can't be satisfied. Yes, I've got the blues, 